Hey guys, my name is Michael Anthony. I am the AAC 2021 Actor of the Year, and I'm also the Greenlit Actor of the Year, and I live here in Atlanta, Georgia. This year has been an amazing year for me. I started off real strong with Chicago Made on NBC. Then I most recently uh, filmed Raising Dion Season 2. Oh, I can't tell you about it, but oh, it's going to be so fire. 16 roles this year alone. Um, this is my fourth year acting and it's, it's just going faster than I could have imagined and I'm blessed, truly blessed and, and very grateful to everybody out there who has given me opportunity, everybody who's, who's believed in me, everybody who's put in the word for me, for me to get these opportunities. opportunities. I'm so grateful to you all and y'all know I'm grateful because I'm always telling you thank you when I see you. All right. I'm going to tell you now from everybody else. Thank you so much. I appreciate you because this is not something that can be done by one person. There's no such thing as self-made in this industry right here. Everybody has to have a tribe, a team of people that believe in them. So thank you. all I love you. all Just filmed a film with Jerry Bruckheimer, a Paramount film going to theaters next year called Secret Headquarters with Owen Wilson, Michael Pena, Jesse Williams, Dustin Ingram. Levy, me, and a bunch of other important famous people that are probably all more famous than me, but it's okay because I'm coming. And I also filmed Kings of Joburg. It was on Netflix. We shot it in Johannesburg with the legendary Shona Ferguson. May he rest in peace. We lost him to COVID this year. Excuse me. And, um, you know, Excellent man, man. Love that brother. His wife, Connie Ferguson, my brother, Samad Davis. Uh, they gave me a, a wonderful opportunity to to become um, an international name. Uh, that film, we actually just won the Hopper Award for Best Series on Netflix. Um, Shona Ferguson got Best Actor. We had the Best Supporting Actor on our on our cast, so it's on fire. And we're actually going to be doing season two. A lot of people was wondering what would happen because our brother crossed over and went to heaven. But uh, he's given his approval from heaven. And Netflix has also gave the green light. So we're going to film season two starting in February. And we're going to dedicate that to Shona Ferguson and his legacy. I filmed Big 50. Y'all saw it on BET where I played Ricky, Big 50's husband, played by Remy Ma. We had Tank in there. We had um, Taronda. Pretty V, Mike Miro, Marquita Goins, uh, Ro was in there. Great cast, great production. Octech Productions produced that. Um, well, recently, I filmed The Covenant, which is on All Black. It's an app. You can search it on Amazon Prime. It's A L L B L C K, All Black. The Covenant, I love that character I played. It was written and produced by a black queen by the name of. Kay Singleton, uh, she produced, wrote, um, and starred in it. And I played her husband, Malcolm, uh, former athlete. I love that one. We also had a Shawnee Roberts in there. Great talent, great production. And right now I'm currently filming the reboot of The Game. I mean, I remember The Game from BET. Fire. Grew up on it. Uh, I get to go on set and, and hang with people that I grew up watching and, and, and you know, looked up to, and they all cool. Because a lot of times you meet people look up to or, or, you, or famous people, you be like, oh, damn, why did I meet you? Because I don't like you no more. But everybody's cool on set. Uh, it's going to be on Paramount+. Plus. I played DeMarco Brown, and this particular character, we touch on mental health and the black community, you know, black men, uh, specifically deal with mental health issues. There's a lot of comedy, of course, in the game. Some, we have fun, but we also touch on some serious topics when it comes to that. So it's cool, man. I'm, I'm having a wonderful year. Wonderful year. Uh, God's been good. My ancestors been good. My mama from heaven, she is throwing them blessings down, and I'm catching them. Today we have the privilege of interviewing Michael Anthony, actor and social media influencer, Michael, you have been one of the most booked actors this year. So tell me, Mike, what do you attribute to being the right guy for the role? Wow. First of all, my ancestors, God in heaven, 
it, it got to come from somewhere else, you know. I mean, there's a lot of people out there working hard, a lot of people um, doing all the right things, but you got to be at the right place at the right time and have the right relationship. So I definitely would say, I mean, uh, 16 roles in a year, I can't take all the credit for that. Definitely can't. But um, I definitely do my part. You know, I'm, I'm passionate about what I do as far as film and television, and it all works out. It's working out right place at the right time, right people. Awesome. So yeah. there used to be a stigma in Hollywood that you had to be like five seven and sample size, you know, <laughs> to get picked. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Do you think that is looks plays a part in Hollywood? Is it all relationships? Is it pure talent? <laughs> I think everything plays a part. If like back in the day, yes, you had to look like a perfect, you know, Tom Cruise, and but nowadays, you know, we want to see everybody. You know, acting now is about portraying everybody. You know, and everybody don't look like Tom Cruise. Everybody's not, um, you know, perfect with no bumps on their face. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Like a lot of people, t a lot of people say, "Hey, I want to get into acting. I'm gonna get in the gym." I'm like, "For what? Get into get into acting class." You don't need a gym to be an actor. This is not a, a, a weightlifting competition. You need to just be able to become, be vulnerable enough to become the character and bring that character to life, and that's it. So what do you think was the most misconceived perception that you thought had to happen for you to be a successful actor? The biggest, uh, the biggest misconception I had about being an actor before when I first started was the audition process. Right? It's like learning all these lines when it's really about uh, being able to capture moments. Um, like when, whenever you are auditioning for a role, to all the actors out there, the 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 writer, the, the producers, the writers, the creator, they're not looking for somebody that can deliver lines, and they don't need you to validate what they wrote. They want you to bring to life the story. So it's more about the moments, the stories, you know, than it is. The, it's never about the words. That was my big, my biggest misconception. Because I, I have a great memory, so I was like, oh, yeah, this would be easy for me because I, I was writing music for 16 years, you know, without using pen and pad. This would be easy, but there's a whole different dynamic to it. What do you think would cause you to turn down the road personally? It just has to match with my brand, you know. It has to match my. If, if I don't feel like uh, that particular, I I can do justice to that role. There are certain roles I would never play, you know. Um, and there are certain productions. If I don't feel like the the production is um, something that I would have a good chemistry with, I won't do it. Uh, if I, if it's going against the direction I'm going in, but in today's time, it's just like sports, you know athletes back in the day just had to play on the team and the owner told them what to do and that was it. Nowadays, LeBron James, these guys, they determine, you know, where they're going to play at, how much they're going to get paid. With social media, we have so much more power as entertainers to where we can turn roles down that don't fit our brand because we're, we're a brand, not just actors. I've had a lot of roles I've turned on, actually. Um, for those reasons, you know, I'm not... There's certain things that, with me... I have certain, there's certain lines I'm not going to cross. You know, I, there's, a, for me, integrity and being a free man is more important than any role, any amount of money, um, any amount of fame or anything. For me, when I leave this earth, I want to leave how Muhammad Ali left this earth, a free man. I don't want to, I don't want to be a slave to anything slave to fame slave to opportunity so um, there's certain things i have written down that i'm never going to do and i don't care if it's a billion dollars i won't do it one of the one of the main questions i get asked when i tell people i'm an actor is you know who do you want to work with and for me I think because I was in the music industry for 16 years and I had a, a chance to meet all these celebrities and I found out that the common denominator is they're all people, just like me and you. For me, it's not about who I want to work with. It's, it's more about who can I learn from? Like, who can, I, who can I do a scene with and the chemistry is right? You know, because it's about the story. Um, so for me, of course I do. I have my favorites. I got Denzel Washington. I got Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, definitely want to work with Jamie Foxx. Uh, but 
it's more about who I can learn from. Like I work with Michael Pena. I never really was like, oh, I want to work with Michael Pena one day. But out of all the people I work with, I learned the most from him on set. It was just something about me that he just saw or he wanted to just pour into me. And when you in a scene with a, with another uh, another actor, it depends on who that actor is because a lot of actors at that at the highest level they they train and look at this like a professional athlete, you know. Um, so it's a scene can become a boxing match if you will you know it's 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 a very competitive sport uh for those at the highest level in this game that's what i'm learning speaking with them learning this this, this is a this is can become war you know of course chemistry has to be correct um it, it could be a dance but if you're not if you don't got your dance moves down right it can become a, a little butt whooping in that scene with with, with with certain actors so Definitely a challenge, and I look forward to. It. I, I I love to work with you know some of my favorites like Denzel Washington, Leonardo DiCaprio. I just want to learn from these guys. It's never going to be a person I'm scared to work with. It's just the, the challenges of the role. I think I think more about that because, but for me personally, my competition is myself. You know, I, I feel like it, that's my biggest competition is me. That's who. That's the only person that can hold me back. The only person that can defeat me. The only person that can um, allow me to be free and be be these characters and be them properly is me. So, no, I, I have no problem working with anybody. I would love to work with the best. Now, when you did the BET film, Big 50, mm -hmm. um, Remy Ma, was this her first time acting in the film? I think this was her, this was her first film definitely as the lead. Um, the lead. Yeah. Okay. I think she did. I think she did say she did something else before, but this was definitely her first time being like you know number one on the call sheet. Uh, that's why I, I call her. I told her I was like, "You Rem Brady, you know Tom Brady. He the quarterback. He number one on the call sheet." Because she, you know, she was like, "What's that mean?" Everybody keeps saying I'm number one on the call sheet. I'm like, "You basically Tom Brady. Like you, you know, you are our leader, so so to speak." So that's her nickname. I got. I call her Rem Brady. But you know what? She is. A, an amazing person she really is man she's an amazing person and her her humility is what makes her a great leader you know her i think a lot of people that try to force it's like a false sense of leadership it's like an insecurity when they when they treat people a certain way rim is she's a, a very powerful energy a very, a very powerful force but it still feels it feels like family you know what i mean so it's kind of like we know she was the leader we didn't have to say it she didn't have to say it but she made everybody feel um just as important as her what is a role that you feel very confident like oh if this is a role for this like i'm your guy i'm mm. the right guy for the role Ooh. um it could be multiple roles too. Definitely would say like a superhero, but a superhero that has the has the um the the human more human element. You know, not like the oh I'm here to save the day, but like the everyday the everyday guy that's a superhero. Uh, that's definitely my lane for sure. Um military like special forces, I have experience in that, so that's my lane as well. Um ex athlete. Um. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm not gonna lie. Any anything I audition for, if I like it and if I if I connect to it, I feel like I'm the guy for that role. That's how I go into it. You know, I just I don't I don't think about booking it. I'm just like, oh, okay, let me just think about this person. Um, because we we've met everybody. You know, we've met everybody. So I just focus on um bringing that part of that character out of me. So I'm the right guy for all the roles. <laughs> so did you audition for the new Wakanda? I didn't. I have what's, what agent? What is going on? Why have I not got? Uh, I started filming uh, already. What? That's what I heard. Word Some, the somebody getting a phone call. Right it's no. It's no way. I'm 260 pounds, six foot five. The actor of the year in Atlanta, Georgia. And I ain't even get an audition. Y'all see how they do me, y'all? Uh? Don't worry, I'm gonna call them in the morning. One of the, I will say there's a performance that I saw on television that that made me say I have to do this, and that was Jamie Foxx when he did Ray. 
because I saw Jamie Foxx turn into Ray Charles. Like, eventually, I didn't see Jamie Foxx anymore. I saw Ray. And then when I when I, I saw I heard that I would watch that movie. My sister would tell you this. I watched the movie every day for like four weeks straight. Every single day I would get home and watch it. I'm just like, how was he doing this? You know. And then when I when I heard the backstory about how he actually had his eyes sealed shut because he didn't want to see, you know. And I and I started to find out about the process of film. And I was like, oh my god, the, the process just intrigued me more than the actual uh, finished product. That's when I was like, I I have to do this. If I had an opportunity to do a film as the lead between a superhero film, a film about my life, or um, a comedy, I definitely want to do all three, to be honest. But I, I would do um, I would do the, the film about my life first because that would be a form of my legacy living on forever. For one and for two, I've done so much stuff. My boys call me the Great Gatsby. Like if I, if you knew everything I'd done in my life, you you would think I was like ninety years old. Um, <laughs> like seriously. And then, secondly, will probably be superhero for selfish reasons because I just want to be a superhero in the film. And I'm two hundred sixty pounds, six five, casting directors, producers, directors. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, and I, I, um, I'm still trying to get this job. I have training, um, tactical training, weapon training, um, hand to hand combat. But anyway, whatever. We're not talking about that. But yeah, definitely superhero next, and then thirdly would be the comedy because people think I'm funny for some reason. Like people come on my Instagram, and I'll be telling real stories, and people be laughing. So I say, well, I guess it's comedy. Truth is comedy. I'm just going to tell you the truth, and y'all laugh at it. So, comedy would be third, but it would probably be the easiest one out of all three. How did you and Country Wayne get together? He is so crazy. Me and Country Wayne got together. Uh, Chase, his manager, um, hit me up one day. He's like, hey, come do this skit, man. I was like, all right, cool. So, I went. We did a skit. We had a really good time. The chemistry was really good between me and Country. And then months later, they hit me again, like, yo, we want to bring you on and, and and make you a character in the story. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So, again, the chemistry between me and country was like, people, like, I had no idea. I mean, country knew because, let me tell you something about Wayne. Wayne is a genius. People think he's just some country dude that's just making faces and no the man is is a genius and he knew exactly what was going to happen i didn't i'm really the country one out of us because i ain't know <laughs> i'm the country bumpkin but no the chemistry between me and country man is it's it's electric man and everywhere i go all over the world not just america but when i travel the world people stop me like oh man from the country Wayne video man i love y'all together so for me, chemistry, whenever you're talking about uh, bringing the role to life or um, bringing a story to life or telling the story correctly, chemistry is, is everything. When you look at sports, I'm always comparing acting to sports because I believe you should train like a professional athlete and you should have the same competitive spirit and fierceness when you train and, and, and um, prepare for your, your projects. But I look at, when you look at teams, right, I remember my boy Reggie Evans who played uh, in the NBA He was one of the best rebounders in the history of the NBA And I was like oh man you just got traded to Brooklyn It's, it's you, it's Paul Pierce It's Kevin Kevin Garnett It's J uh, Joe Johnson it, I was like y'all gonna win for sure And he said we look good on paper He said but chemistry is everything And he started naming teams Like back in the day when Portland had got all the, Those all stars together and couldn't win You know you can have the best Five guys on the court But if y'all chemistry ain't right Y'all ain't going to win. And it's the same thing in acting. You know, you can take some of the greatest actors and put them in a scene together. If they don't have that chemistry, it, it reads and we can feel that. Uh, that's why you have a lot of people who work together all the time because they understand that chemistry is everything. People can feel it. One of the things that block chemistry is ego. People will, they don't, they don't realize it's about the story. It's not about you. It's a storytelling. You know, the story has to choose you to be on the project. And once you get in the project, whatever your role is, you got to just commit to that. You know, but ego does play a role in killing chemistry all the time, and especially in this game. 
So I will say that Atlanta has gotten a lot better as far as our, our reputation in, in the in the industry. And the reason for that is because the one thing that LA always had is tribes. Actors having tribes, you know, in Atlanta wasn't like that at first. It was just like I want to be an actor. I go to acting class for once a week and then I audition and I do a terrible job and I go back to class once a week and I you know what I'm saying and, and and in LA it's like yo I met this person neither one of us have anything it's five of us and you know because we LA is already too it's super expensive and it's five of us we all came in from different parts of the country and this is our dream and we rely on each other if one person book then they feed everybody and it's just we just gonna live to somebody take off but Atlanta wasn't like that this Atlanta started to get like that that was that was one of the first things that I once I realized the difference between L.A. and Atlanta, I developed a tribe. You know, I reached out to some actors that were I felt were amazing actors and said, hey, man, y'all want to build a tribe together? No ego. I'm not the leader of this group. We're all on the same level. We're going to lean on each other. We're going to meet. We're going to have drinks. We're going to eat together. We're going to critique, critique each other. And we're going to hold each other accountable. And that's one of the things I think that is, is starting to bring Atlanta to that level where we respect it as actors in this industry. For sure. Well, how can one find the tribe? You can't find our tribe. Oh. It's our tribe. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we know. No, I didn't click it. It's just we like we don't have a we don't have we agreed no social media no hashtag because you know everything that everybody do nowadays it gotta go on social media. You go on a date, you gotta show what you're eating. You go on a vacation, you gotta show everybody. Look, we in Tulum. Like no, you gotta have something like the most important groups in this world are secret societies. Like the most important thing on your body is not your skin that you see every day. It's the organs on the inside. The people who run this country is not the president. You see his ass and we be complaining like we need to get rid of him. It ain't him. It's the organs. The people you don't see is the heart, the lungs, the liver. You know what I mean? That's why we created the tribe. And we not we ain't doing no crazy rituals or nothing, but we just like, yo. Everything we do has to be genuine because nothing is for anybody outside of this tribe. We just gonna work. We gonna we gonna grind. We ain't putting no jewelry on. We ain't trying to get no likes. This is about the process. And then we go to set. You know, we shine because of that. All right. Please follow me on Instagram, Mike Bless. M I K E B L E S S. Follow me on Facebook or whatever the hell they calling it these days. Mike Bless, M-I-K-E-B-L-E-S-S. -S. Follow me on YouTube, Mike Bless TV. I got my own channel. Follow me on Twitter, Mike Bless, M-I-K-E-B-L-E-S-S. -S. And then go to my, I got my own website, michaelanthony.io. Go on there. I ain't really, it's, it's something on there. I'm going to put some stuff on there for y'all. My TikTok is Mike Bless, M I K E B L E S S underscore official. That is the only TikTok I have. Apparently, somebody else got a TikTok that got more followers than me with my damn name and way more videos than me, but that's the only one I have. My Instagram is Mike Bless, M I K B L E S S. It's a whole bunch of other people that don't have a life, that don't, you know. Don't have a girlfriend, boyfriend, they got no damn dog. They ain't got no fish in the tank. And they bored and they made a page trying to be me. You can't be me. All right? The Lord said, I'm going to make one of you. He made one of you. You should be happy for who you are. Stop making fake pages, everybody. It's an epidemic. It's a catfish epidemic. Stop being a catfish and be a shark out here, okay? We sick of y'all little catfish. Catfish stink any damn way and it ain't good for you. I want to thank Rolling Out for choosing me for this cover. You know, I'm very grateful, and I feel truly blessed that I am the right guy for the role.